Hey guys, this is a bit different video. Um, a lot of you know I do search and rescue. I've done it for 20 years. And many have asked for me to do some videos on some of the search and rescue. This one is more unfortunate. It's more about search and recover. One of them made it out alive, the other didn't. So let's dive into this video. Um, it's why I like to build crazy aircraft. I've been search doing search and rescue by air for a long, long time. And we brought a lot of people home to their families um, this one, not everyone made it home all right, but I do want to talk about what we can do to be better prepared because there's a lot of these situations where everyone can make it home. Um, let's dive into this and uh, it's a little different, but I hope you like to follow along and learn something from it because there's a lot of people out there that uh, we can help. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, we just pulled into the airport. Um, it's just after seven in the morning. We're on our way out to Tonopah. Uh, I've got Dave Sparks and his team coming down. He already sent his equipment up. What we're doing today, um, as we had a couple go missing in a motorhome. Word about a missing Indianapolis couple is spreading across the country more than a week after their disappearance. And they've been missing for over a week. Um, I called out, I've been in contact with the Sheriff's Department. Ron and Beverly Barker were last seen in Nevada two weekends ago on a cross-country road trip. It's like they've disappeared off the face of the earth. They have vanished literally into thin air. Somewhere last Sunday night along Highway 95. The last hard ping was in Coaldale, which is south of Lunning. After that, the Barker's daughters don't know what happened to them or if they even made it any further down the highway. Um, but I contacted them because how long the search was going to see if I could help find the missing uh, motorhome. They were going to call me back if they needed help. They had a couple other birds in the air, and we just got word that they found them. Um, unfortunately, the outcome wasn't great. I believe the husband passed away. Um, the wife, uh, I think, was taken to the hospital to be checked. Um, and I don't know much more than that. So um, at least they've been found. Um, not the best outcome. And uh, we got great guys. We're going to take the platus. We got great guys like Dave Sparks. We're going to see if we can help now that they've been located, but we're gonna go see if we can recover um, the RV and the vehicle and get it out and trying to get that off the plate of their concerns about what to do with that. So um, it's never good to have a search and rescue end this way, um, but uh, at least they've been found. There's closure for the family and um, the wife, uh, as I understand, is alive and okay. So. Let's go get the vehicle. Um, I, I don't know much more of the detail. I don't know if it's easy, difficult. I, I, I have no details. We're gonna find out soon. So we're gonna load up in the Platus. All the other vehicles are on the way and uh, get to work. Let's go get a vehicle off the mountain. Guys, we just landed in Tonopah. 
We've got two expert recovery guys, this uh, rescue call out. This is a different one for me. Usually uh, search and rescue, we're going after the people. Uh, I was called out on uh, this one. I've been in communication with the sheriff's department that was in charge of this search and rescue, um, offering up the helicopter. It's a little outside the range. I normally go, I'm usually Southern Idaho, Utah, touch into Nevada. This is kind of in the middle of nowhere, which is why I uh, reached out from our search and rescue team to their team to uh, offer up my helicopter to go on the search. Um, they uh, had a few birds in the air and they were gonna call me back. And uh, by the time they reached back out, they had found um, the couple. Uh, unfortunately, one has passed um, and uh, the other is uh, being taken care of. And we're out here with two superstars at recovering to try and recover the vehicle that was stuck. And um, what's funny is you got the call to go search for them via the air yep. and we got the email like a day later saying they found the people but their vehicles are in no man's land like nobody they've, essentially everybody they've talked to every record service everybody within a 500 mile radius said no we're not touching it the yeah. rv's got shredded tires uh their little kia soul that they were towing is stuck and they are way yeah you know way back up in there so for us today it's we're bringing trucks equipment cables rope tools you name it and this is like yeah, half yeah. the tools and uh, we gotta get that RV back up to Reno because that's where the old lady is. Um, Beverly might be her name. Um, her husband broke wrong, passed away, and she can't fly back to Indiana for medical reasons. So the family's gonna drive her in the RV that we have to go get off the mountain. So that's why this has become such a time sensitive thing. And the fact that, you know, the poor woman is just you know, stuck in the wilderness for 10 or 12 days and yeah. no food or water. And then her husband died in her lap. So. It's, uh, it's bittersweet for sure. Yeah, as long as we get to bring them home, it's the best. The family gets closure, and uh, you know this is a, a unique pair up. We've done a few things together recently and become uh, more acquainted and, and known each other for years. This one was kind of odd because we both got pulled into it from two different sides, uh, recovery and search and rescue, and it was really random when I got the call from Dave it says, "Hey, you got the Platus available." We're on this recovery and he told me which one i said i just got the call uh, a couple days ago for the search and uh to kind of pair up naturally on the same uh call out um is a lot of fun and, yeah. and on this situation they were going to either drive six to 12 hours depending on which route they went or um, get some equipment from somebody close by jump in the platus and so uh, he called me i was in florida we bounced jumped down a plane came straight out here got the platus loaded up their gear and uh, we're going to go drive up a mountain try and get the vehicle back to the family and try and at least ease the, the pain and suffering a little bit and uh, get them back to a normal life the best they can yeah that's why we loaded up the turban suburban is that what we call yeah, it the turban the suburban, suburban thing suburban. is the platus <laughs> is nuts i have my epic that i love you guys know we fly it all the time the only reason we didn't fly it out here is because it's uh in annual maintenance right now so that's why i called uh i called the babies and they brought the platus which is a much better fit because all that doesn't that's like all the epic would hold plus all the guys <laughs> plus all our guys. we got an army guys. Yeah. <laughs> we feel that all but one seat i think on yeah, this thing yeah i know so Planes are so, well, all right, so you guys never say this on your channel. I'm going to say it on mine. Enough talking. Let's get back to work. <laughs> <laughs>
took us way off course. And by the time you, you pass the point of no return, you realize that fuel, all, all these different things come into consideration. So you have to just decide like, okay, well maybe this is just a, you know, a little weird little detour. We'll just follow it through. So I don't know what GPS they were following. I don't know what route they were taking, but so, for them to get to where they're at now, they would have had to have been on roads like this for at least two hours. And they were not intentionally going off road. And that was not the purpose of their trip. The trip was to like make it through Yosemite or something, right? Yeah, something like that. So I did find out, I watched an interview this morning. I know everybody wants to know how did they get up there? How did they, what brought them up there? Um, and as a lot of people suspected, it was, it was bad GPS directions. Um, they did not have the highway switch on their GPS to where it only kept them on highways. It would basically take you to the quickest route. So it was one of, the, one of those things where the GPS said go this way, and they went that way. This went on for a while. Um, they were okay. They were like, okay, you know, the, it looks bad, but she was like, the motorhome was doing really good. You know, the, the car was bouncing around, but you know, we were like, okay. And it kept going to the point that like, they weren't even really concerned. It was like, oh gosh, you know, we're over this stupid gravel road. Um, but it wasn't like they were uh, off-road vehicles. You know, it was, they were just going. So basically taking any road, on a highway, which obviously is what we're dealing with right now. And uh, the problem was, if you start getting in here, the deeper we're going right now, the further away we're going away from anything. Like we're not getting closer to anything on, on this, this side of the road. On the other side, the only closest town is a place called Dyer, which is like equal distance away from Tonopah where we landed. So this is just one of those no man's lands out here where there's just nothing. You know, they, unfortunately, I think, uh, saw some other vehicles out here, so I thought maybe this is normal, maybe this is just part of the trip. This is, and, and you know, fortunately, his wife, it's Beverly, I believe is her name. Yeah. She's still alive, so she'll be able to tell her story. I know she's already started to tell it a little bit here and there, but, I mean, she's still probably going through some severe trauma and trying to just get healthy again because, you know, you're... <laughs> stuck in the mountains for 10 or 12 days with no food or water at that age mess with you all right we're about halfway we've been on this dirt road for an hour we've got another hour probably to go and uh, you get this far out in the middle of nowhere and i mean we are in the middle of nowhere there is nothing within hours uh an hour in every direction and tonopah is almost in the middle of nowhere and we're an hour out of there and there's not many places to turn around with a RV and a car in tow, and uh, apparently just continued going. We have limited information, but since uh, one of them did survive, we are getting some of those stories as we go and getting uh, updated. But we got uh, another hour to go, but just looking at how desolate this is, you can see why it took so long for them to be found. Um, there's nobody out here, there's just us. And uh, I'm glad there's several of us, because if you break down, you're in trouble. Handing it. <laughs> I'm just watching I'm literally, this trailer twerking. And, uh, anyone no. watching this, this <laughs> video, I'm holding this as steady as I can, blocked on the seat. This is just, uh, we got to bring the RV down this. Dave, you're going to be the driver. Can you do that? I'm going to bring the speed wreckers down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Seriously. Two wheeling down this. She can't drive her own Spare tires for the RV right here. You know, they, they took one turn and then they took another turn. 
And they eventually got to the point um, where, the, where they got stuck. We should be able to find it. We flew over it with the platus. I mean, it may not look like much, but look how steep this is right now. And you get a big RV. That's leaning pretty hard. They were just trying to get out and get somewhere. But man, if you look at the train we've been hiking on, it's gonna be an interesting drive out. Some of those angles back there, they had to be feeling like they're gonna tip over just driving yeah. on them. And I know you're driving it out. That's gonna be fun. But yeah, getting to here and seeing it just switch back. That's crazy. I bet what that was just the most meant. disheartening feeling, you know? So this is like um, the same theme um, on a lot of the search and rescues I've gone out on. Um, it's always nothing until it's everything. And uh, where you start down a path or someone starts on a hike or a trail or um, every single one of them starts out as a normal, perfect, beautiful day. And then it just goes from bad to worse. And it's a series of multiple unfortunate events that lead to something like this. A blown tire, high centered out, stuck, unload the vehicle that they're towing and then go get that stuck. And uh, it's literally a daisy chain of events. Um, not bad decisions every time. It's literally can just be following a map, thinking you're doing it right, and then getting to a point of no return, and then thinking you can continue your way out. And um, it's how these typically end. So um, it's unfortunate. Oh man, that's right. Okay. Right. <laughs> I didn't. Get That's what we get. We got almost exactly a quarter tank, but we're tipped pretty steep, so I don't know if that's how accurate it is. Came out piece of cake. And you have a good tire and a machine to hook to it. And you're by yourself, you got no options.
One more time. One more time. There we go. That's what we want. Nice. Whoa. I dropped that one on the ground the whole time. Good? Yeah, you were you were putting the air on this side. Nice. And it was it was late in the night, uh, Sunday night. Um, last Sunday the 27th and um, they decided okay you know they didn't really panic they didn't panic at all they said well we'll just spend the night in the, in the RV and tomorrow we'll get back in the in the Kia and, and we'll drive back down the mountain the way we came no big deal they were so sure of the ability to get down the mountain they didn't think about bringing food or water or blankets we got one rig out we got one more to go um, there was no way they were coming out of here. I, I don't care how amazing you are off-road or anything, you were buried. The tough situation here is, I I don't know, personally I've been in some tight situations we got out of, but I've been on a lot of rescue calls where we talked to people about their mindset and their process as they went through getting stuck. And probably at this point, I don't even know if they were that worried about it. Probably frustrated at this point, they had dented the motor home, bent the exhaust up, hits a few things, broke branches, um, but nothing serious. Um, most people, when they get in these situations, baby step in, they don't really realize they have a problem until it all goes completely south. And they took a wrong turn. Um, they, they lose the tire tracks. Well, that vehicle's where we're going right now, um, and they got it stuck. When the second vehicle got stuck, that's when everything sinks in and you realize your backup plan's gone, and now you're in real trouble. They eventually got stuck. All right, let's get the Kia. It, um, the story, you know, it, I don't even know how to put it. They, um, they knew they were in trouble, but the story that she told to me was almost, like I said, it was religious. As, as time progressed, um, my uncle, who is a very devout Christian, um, he, would, he would see figures from the Bible and, uh, and took so much comfort in that. Um, my Aunt Beverly, who's very immobile, um, if she has to go very far at all, she's in a wheelchair, or if she has to cross a room, she's in a cane. Um, she saw snow up on the mountain, um, just, you know, in the shadows of rocks, and, and there was a ledge, I believe she said, and she was like, well, I can, there's no way I can get up there, but I'll try. And repeatedly through the week, she would get her, she had a walker with her, and, and she would make it up that, up that hill. It's rough. 20 years of doing this, it never gets easy. It's always something. A pair of shoes, uh... Outfit, this one, just seeing the walker is tough. It's tough. Rough deal. I'm glad she's back with her family right now. So let's get their stuff off this mountain. And she would make it back down. She said it was cold. Um, she said the nighttime temperatures got down around 27. Eventually came to the realization that um, Nobody, nobody knew where they were. But you know, through, throughout the throughout the entire conversation, it wasn't um, it wasn't upsetting. It was it was almost uplifting. Um, she talked about how beautiful the sky was, how just blue, and she said you you wouldn't believe all the jets that were just crossing the sky. But she said the stars were just the most amazing stars you've ever seen in your life. But she, she said, you know, we, we were at peace. Um, and uh, as, as the days and the nights passed, um, my Uncle Ronnie told her that he was dying. He was dying. And she said, I know. I know you're dying. They would, they would snuggle uh, in the back seat of the Kia. And as, as, um, as Ronnie got worse and worse, um, uh, 
you know, they, <laughs> they were just trying their best to, to huddle together and, and to stay warm. And uh, all along, you know, he would ask her to read the Bible to him. He finally, um, he finally passed away Monday, just two days ago, uh, around uh, around 3:15 in the afternoon, and uh, she was okay with it. He told she told him, "It's okay. I know you need to go." And uh, she said that. Uh, he passed away and, and she took a photo of him so that she would remember the exact time. And then it became her turn, you know. Um, but she, she remembered, you know, that SOS that Uncle Ronnie taught her. And uh, beeping that horn is what brought rescuers to her. You know, from there it was just getting off the mountain. Um, uh, I'm just amazed at the strength that that woman had up there. Um, I have no doubt that it was the Lord carrying her to that water, to that snow, to make water that kept her alive um, because she wouldn't be able to, to walk across this room, let alone up uh, the sides of a mountain in the desert. Josh, you can hear us? I can hear you, Dad. The Duramax just stopped. Dead stop in mid-beat. Oh, shoot. Do it prime it? it? It'll just crank. Uh, do we need to flip around? Hans is coming up. I don't know if we shook something loose or whatever, but it's uh, it's dead, dead. Ten four. Spark or fuel. Got a big old girl in here. Lock it. Yeah. You want to try? Is it getting hard? No. Your eyes. Still not hard? Looks like the fuel filter came loose, so we're priming the engine right now. Uh, we'll let you know right. what happens. Copy. Uh, I think we're going to hang out here. Um, I just got into cell phone service, so we're kind of down the low land. I see a pole line, uh, probably half mile, three quarters of a mile in front of me. Uh, we'll probably just wait here and we'll have Barb throw up some sandwiches. Dave, is getting a little hungry. Hold on. I'm going to throw me on the...
<laughs> well, while you were talking, it started, and then uh, we shut the hood of the truck and it died. So we're we're working towards it. Pump. Okay. Party mode. Yeah. I think we're good. What idle? Ain't that a bunch of diesel guys get picked, huh? <laughs> All right guys, we're on our way out. So we're out of the roughest part. We're off all the big back windy roads. We've been traveling for over an hour. Stopped, got a bite to eat. This is the closest thing to a town we've come to. We hit asphalt for literally a thousand feet. Then you look at this sign, and we get turned this way and go down this gravel road for another 37 miles, which is another hour. So we're in the middle of nowhere, heading back into the middle of nowhere. Give us about an hour, we'll be back to the plane and head on out. All right guys, we just finished the recovery. The vehicles are on their way back home they're going up to reno and then they'll head back east but uh everything went really well a couple of little glitches but quite frankly it went as smooth as it possibly could about as good for, as it gets for how logistically challenging that was they were in the middle of nowhere yeah i mean i think we're all in like 12 hours maybe start to, start to finish which is insane because they had been stuck there for nine ten days and yeah nobody in the area was willing to get them that's why these these uh, these aircraft are used as like pickup trucks. We literally yeah. just transferred like five six hundred pounds worth of tools from the Pilatus to the TRX. Now to the back of my BR105, and we're headed home. So yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that makes all the difference being able to move equipment around like that. This guy makes all the difference because he's got uh, all the cool stuff. So. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no man, it was uh, it was a good. You recovery. know what? This uh, this is our first recovery together, and it was random. We actually both got called into the same project at the same time and we've just been hanging out a bit and i'm sure we're gonna do a bunch more of this kind of stuff and being able to share have people in aviation that are happy to share their planes their aircraft to go out and help people you can't have anything better in aviation than guys like that so i'm happy i was able feeling to spend we the day can with do you. a lot of recoveries with yeah so looking forward to that one. Yeah, for sure yeah all, all right, right. we're gonna get these you. guys home sun setting it's time to call it quits for the day but uh, everything went well. We'll hope to see you next time. Let's get back to work.